busy working on the mast here at the moment, the communications mast. So this bit is a piece out of an old printer. It's like one of the return roller things from a printer. Uh, you can still see the sort of cog on the top there. Uh, this was like from a toy, oops sorry, get it in camera, this was from a toy and um, basically I've just raided the spares stash to find a whole lot of bits and pieces so we've got like truck suspension, uh, landing gear from a Mustang, we've got bits of old battleships, uh, this is a light from a toy, um, what else we got? a Mustang drop tank, uh, this is a coffee stirrer. Oh, it's a coffee stirrer I got on an aeroplane. <laughs> God, such a hoarder. Uh, helicopter rotor, like one seventy-second scale. This here is from the same helicopter. I uh, hope you can see that. Let's get some focus. It's an Airfix 1976 made in England. But the main thing I'm going to be working with is this, which is... Um, I think it's an engine cowl from some kind of 132nd Japanese aircraft. I think it's from a George. And I'm basically going to balance that on top and then stick a whole lot of gizmos to it. And hopefully that's going to have that kind of airy and fairly light look that I'm after. So yeah, I'm just going to get sticking away here. This is the bit I love. When you've actually got stuff to work with as opposed to you have to make it yourself, yeah, it's much quicker. Not quite as challenging, but um, probably a bit more enjoyable actually. Alright, I'll show you soon. And here's where we're at after a couple of hours of playing around with it. Probably about two hours. Um, I feel like it looks quite suitably sci-fi-y. For some reason it reminds me of um, Cloud City in the Star Wars films. That's possibly a good thing. Um, yeah, pretty happy with it so far. What I'm planning to do now is have lots of sort of dangling cords and things like that to make it look a little bit more shabby and steampunky. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy. It's coming along. All those weird bits and pieces seem to be working. And check this out. Let me try and do it without destroying it. Ah, it turns. <laughs> that gives me far more pleasure than it really should. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. Ideally I would have liked to have shown you a bit more about putting the bits and pieces onto the mast and just sort of the process of, of building that. Um, but it's not something that you can easily video because it's really just a matter of going through your junk pile, all your bits and pieces, all your greeblies, all your govens, all your leftovers, and just seeing what works. Um, and that doesn't really translate well to video unfortunately. You know, you hold it up, you go, meh, nah. Hold this one up, yeah, yeah. It's not exactly scintillating video. But yeah, this is the stuff that didn't make it onto the mast that I was thinking about. So, you know, all of this stuff could have potentially worked. Almost lost that. Um, all of this stuff could have potentially worked, but it just didn't end up, you know, working out like this. Was a little road sign from a toy set that my daughter had. Um, it, yeah. But it is, like, with so much of scratch building, it's just a matter of, you know, you hold it up, you put it against it, try a different angle, and just see, mm, does that work? Nah. Am I going to have to build it myself? Yeah, maybe. Um, this was also in the contending, in the contending, in the contention. It was a contender. That's better. Hey. <laughs> um, so I was thinking, yeah, this could look pretty cool, poking out the top of the mast as some kind of fancy pants transmitter. But in the end, it felt a little too sort of 1950s science fiction-y. A bit, a bit daggy. But yeah, um, this was also in the running. It's like a piece of a earbud. Thought that could look cool on top, but in the end, I found a piece that fitted perfectly. Um, all of this old landing gear, and like so much of this is just leftover bits and pieces from kits, as you can tell. Um, landing gear, I thought, oh, that could work really nicely underneath as um, as kind of bits and bobs, you know, stuff that the that the antennas are actually plugged into. Um, in the end, I found a really nice piece from, it was a 148th B26, no, B17 piece of landing gear, and I chopped that up and used it on the bottom of it. Um, yeah, it's, this piece is still possibly going on. I'm not too sure about this yet. It's like some kind of weather vane or wind direction thing. It's still in the contention, but I don't know, it's pretty big. Um, but yeah, that's really all it is, it's just a matter of trying, fitting holding it up, 
changing the angle and seeing what works for you. And in the end, you know, you, you come up with stuff that you go, yeah, that works. Um, yeah, like I said, would have liked to have shown you a bit more, but it's just not a very interesting video, sorry. <laughs> Let's move on. Well, I'm pretty excited. It's time to paint. Whoa! It feels like it's been a long time coming. So these are all the bits and pieces. These are all the major sub-assemblies, aside from a couple that I've already painted previously, like six months ago, which is ridiculous. A couple of the sort of tail fins and things that hang down. So we've got the main hull. We've got the mast, which I'm really chuffed with. We've got cabin and the cabin door. We've got the various bits of the lighthouse. We've got this bit of machinery which goes in there. We've got the crane which is going to sit up here and we've got the engine which I've previously painted black. Oh boy, it's been a long time coming. <laughs> I think you guys probably feel the same. It's a bit of a relief to be at this stage now. So I'm going to do some masking, cover up all the doors and windows of that so it doesn't spray inside, and then time for primer. And then we'll see how much needs to be fixed. I am excited! Woohoo! <laughs> I genuinely am excited. Excellent. Well, it's perfect spraying weather, perfect painting weather. Can't ask for better. It's beautiful and sunny. Got all my stuff, it's masked. Got my primer, grey primer, it's like basic cheapo stuff, but it's really, it's, it's kind of basic and fundamental, but it works, you know? It's kind of like a Russian tank and it's not all technical or finessed, but uh, it's pretty reliable. <laughs> Never heard anyone describe spray paint like a Russian tank before. All right. I'm going to do this. I'm not going to video it because I need both my hands. Uh, wish me luck. I'm really excited and a little bit nervous. I don't know why. I think it's because it's been a long time coming. Here goes. Those are the hands of someone who's done a lot of priming just then. I'll wait and see how it looks. It's all done. Just waiting for it to dry. Well, the primer seems to have gone on pretty well. I've cleaned up one or two little flaws that I noticed but overall I'm very very happy with it. Makes such a difference doesn't it? Such a difference. Everything suddenly looks more real. Yeah I'm very chuffed with that. So now I'm gonna go through and paint everything a sort of rust tone to start yeah putting down rust and then I'll do the hairspray technique maybe in a, in a bit of the salt technique, just to get lots of colour modulation. So, got my red brown to start with, got my airbrush, time to get started. And here it is, here's the hull after the first coat of paint. So it's overall to me a red brown, I've put a few sort of shadowy bits in with a thin layer of black, very low PSI. Um, quite thin, just to give it a little sense of darkness in some of those darker areas, some of those you know sort of more hidden areas. Um, look for the rust paint job that I'm doing here. So I'm going to do the hairspray technique over the top of it. For the rust rust effect here that I'm doing, it doesn't have to be perfect because you know you're not going to see the whole thing. You're going to see splashes here, splotches there, chips here, chips there, scratch there. It doesn't have to be perfect. What I am going to do is just splotch on randomly some splatters of different rust colours and for this I'm going to use my AK Interactive Rust Effect colour set. So there's six of these in the set and uh, yeah, going to use those. So these are acrylic colours. Look, I'm not going to sit here and say to you, oh these are the best. They're really convenient and for the purposes I'm using, I don't care if they're acrylics or enamels, whatever, once they're sealed underneath a layer of hairspray um, and then another you know, enamel layers on top. It's not going to make a lick of difference what you use. I'm just using them for convenience. So I've splattered some of the medium colour already in here and now I'm just putting a bit of water in as well to 
thin it up. Oldish brush. Let's just try a little quick splat effect over here. Yep, great. Obviously, you want to protect whatever the thing is behind it with some paint, um, with some paper. And you can already see, I'll try and get in a bit closer there. You can already see the splatter effect. It's pretty random, of course, because you're splattering. Um, and that's just the effect I'm after here. So I'm going to keep splattering. I'll give you a minute's more fascination of it. And really, it's just there on the off chance that when I chip something, you'll get a bit of this underneath it as well. Might be lucky, might not. Chances are 90% of these aren't going to show up. But you never know. Plus, it's just kind of fun to do. And it does definitely make it feel more rusty. So I'm going to do a couple of different tones. Yeah, you get the idea. Obviously the wetter you brush, the bigger the splats. Yeah, you can see some really big ones there. Yeah, it's pretty unrealistic. If you just left it at that, totally unrealistic. But for what I'm going to do, totally fine. I'll do some more. So here's everything with a quick splattering of the light rust colour. Gives you an idea of how it's coming out. It's, yeah, like I said before, if you left it at that, it's not very convincing rust. But we're only just getting started, my, my friends. Um, just mixing up a little bit more colour here. Slightly darker tone this time, but I reckon this is probably going to end up fairly close to where we started. Oh no. And now I'm just sort of splattering it on randomly in places that I think are likely to get a bit of a chip action. Again, you know, if you did this as your actual rust in the final job, you'd be in a sad place. But it's starting to look a bit more rusty overall. Splat some around the top. So really I'm just trying to concentrate on areas that I think will get chipping now. Brush is pretty loaded, it's pretty random. <laughs> it's pretty out of focus. God, sorry. Yeah, there we go. So I'm just going to go through and do that. I find when these um, when these acrylic colours dry, they tend to be pretty forgiving anyway. You, know, you, you don't end up with completely the crazy tonal variation that you're seeing while they're wet. Pretty sure these guys are going to end up with a lot of chipping on them. Definitely around the top hatch area here. Yeah, you get the idea. And this is where we're at. So I'm pretty happy. Look, like I said, it's not the most convincing rust job in the world. But most of it's going to get covered up. 95% of it is going to be covered up. And I think for what we have, it's good enough. It doesn't have to be better. That's not me being lazy. It just doesn't have to be better. It would be wasted effort. For once, it's not me being lazy. Um, and that is where I'm going to leave it, guys. I'm so chuffed to have paint on this thing, finally. Um, that is where I'm going to leave part seven, guys, because I'm about to go ahead and do hairspray technique, and I've got a slightly different version of that than what I normally do, and I wanted to do a video specifically about that. So, yeah, I'm going to leave part seven here now. Part eight will be coming up once there's a bit of paint on this bad boy, and... We're getting there. It's exciting to finally be getting there. Oh, I should mention, um, the deck here, I have left the deck off because I still need to cram a whole lot of good stuff into the interior there. So, still need to put the mechanism in here. Um, still need to 
put the, the sort of suspension wires from the ocean floor in through there. So yeah, that's going to be the very last thing that I put in. So decking will go in, then all the stuff will be mounted to the decking. Um, yeah, so look, hope this has been of interest to you. Had a lot of people say on part six that they're loving seeing some progress on this finally, as opposed to baby steps, baby steps, we're finally getting somewhere. And you know what? I'm excited about it too. So yeah, any questions or anything, please comment below. But otherwise, yeah, this is Dave signing off. Until next time, see you later, guys. Bye. <laughs>